Hey everybody, Lambo here. We are here with Giants Editor 8.1 Beta. And we're going to do a Giants Editor Basics 101. So if you're in advanced, this is going to be outside your scope a little bit. And pardon me, I just have a lot of people asking me, just straight noobs, don't know how to use the software. So we're going to try to break this down as quick as I can for you and in the easiest, simplest way. I get excited and I talk a lot and I talk fast. I'll try to do it simple. So when you very first open this up, it should look like this. First thing I want you to do is notice in the bottom left hand corner of your view here, it'll say outdoor camera. Whenever you're modding a vehicle, this is strictly for vehicles, equipment, uh, this is not for maps. Uh, later date we'll do a maps video right now for the next couple weeks months probably we're going to be focusing strictly on vehicles so uh, if you're into maps sorry not sure not not the channel right now that you want to be watching but in the future yes so you'll notice it says outdoor camera here and if we move at all we are technically moving the outdoor camera and this one I like it a little bit back I use this in game and I liked it back a little bit this is Winston's Peterbilt log and truck. So since we have that that issue, you can either A, move it back to this position every time you go and do stuff and you go to zip up your mod, or you can go to create, and we can just create a new camera. We're going to cut that camera, open up PD here. So on, this is called your scenograph. Okay, you open it up, and this is everything inside of this. This is your rigid body, and I'll go into more detail later, but right now we're just going to install this camera. And I hit Control V while I have the Pete log truck or whatever the mod thing is, and then the camera's inside there now. It won't cause an error anymore. So we're just going to click on camera. So it's going to put us into this camera view, and from here you can use the keys W, S, A, and D like you're playing a game to move around while you're holding the left click button. Okay, uh, to select things like that tire, I, sorry, that was right click button holding down while I use the AWS and D, and then left key to select things. As I'm selecting things, you'll notice it highlights them over here in the scenograph. Now there is other information that you can view. If you go up here to window, select that, and you go to user attributes, sorry, that's for codes and stuff my apologies attributes that's what I wanted okay and this is going to tell me where it is on the map look at this like a big map and these here are GPS coordinates where an item is if it's rotated that's what this rotate X is and then how big it is and if it's invisible or not see and then the clip distance is uh, when you're playing the game how far away something will show up uh, when you're really far away from it. So if this is, so let's click on the Pete log truck and look at the clip distance at 300 meters or feet. I don't know what that is, but that's typical for a vehicle is about 300. That's what you'd put your, for your clip distance, but it'll be visible in game. Let's just say it's 300 meters. Um, min clip distance is usually always zero, to be honest with you. Um, I, I, I'm going to, guess because I haven't ever changed this that this means that that's the minimum clip distance it would be one you know maybe, maybe the mods invisible when you get close to it at the player with that a little bit object mask we're not going to be using at all um, modding vehicles LODs we're not going to be using that at all uh, joints later on uh, more advanced stuff but this is a rigid body this peat logging truck that's why that's clicked a rigid body is there's like a little boxes here that you can kind of see an outline there in the game the game says that those are hard boxes that hit other hard rigid bodies and they stop each other so then it creates the effect of um, like a real animation because the colors and all this texture you see that make up this mod are not really the mod what the mod is is all these collisions okay 
that's what a rigid body is. There's a couple different types of collisions. And I'll show you inside here. First collisions are going to be your main one, which is when I go like this on the scenograph, there's nothing underneath it. Uh, this is your main rigid body, and you can always tell it's a rigid body because this will be clicked, and this option will be lit up. So we'll go into rigid body, I'll kind of explain a little bit. Dynamic is vehicles, uh, it implements stuff like that. That's usually going to be your vehicle all the time. It's going to be dynamic. Uh, compound, it's the main one, and it's a collision. So, and here's a collision mask uh, for this truck. Uh, or any other semi, you could use the same collision mask, and it varies from vehicle to vehicle. You'd have to dive into the other XMLs to get different, like if you wanted a combine, you'd go into the game XML for a combine and find that collision mask and copy and paste that. Uh, we'll go down here, none of this stuff I really ever change um, for modding except for the density here, and that's kind of, it's telling you how heavy it's going to be or the mass. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's double that. So 2,000, like, so a mass of one would be 2,000 pounds, I believe. We'd have to double check on that. But if this is ridiculously high, your mod's going to be ridiculously heavy. This is how it kind of works. If it's low, then low. I mean, most trailers and like the pickup truck, the, the in-game pickup truck is only 4.6. So that would put it at about 8,000 pounds, which would make sense. Um, then we'll go into here on this rigid body. And usually all these are clicked, especially the non-renderable. You can see when I click that, that that box pops up. That's actually the main uh, where the game says that's that's the main uh, body, it's the main vehicle. So we'll click that button again. Uh, I'm not going to mess with anything in here unless you're resizing this, which would be in a later video that I do, probably one of the next ones, I imagine. Um, and then we would recompute BBs, which that just basically tells the game where the center of like rigid bodies. Not 100% sure on that, but I just click it because if I don't, I tend to find I find errors with the collisions. They go back to the way they were before. But if you know any different, please let me know. But so far, that's why I do it. So moving on from this, let's get into the a different type of collision here, since we're on collisions. Oh, I had it. OK, so this guy's invisible right here. But there's another collision there, and it's basically representing this backboard so you can stack logs in here. Um, usually they're called collision. If you see down here in the bottom left, TOL part, collision part, and then you'll it'll be represented by this box here that's just, you can only see it when you got it clicked on. And rigid body is actually not clicked on for this one because it's not in use. But I'm sure we could find another collision around here that, so there's a collision of the flat right there. That's that section, that section's flooring. And then it is clicked here, but this one is a static. So I click here and that's what that is. Static uh, collision is it, it's a part of this main body. It is in its own entity. Uh, it stays in one spot on the mod. It's assigned to that section of the mod. Uh, look at the mods like a big map that when you load it up in game, that map is within a map. If that makes any kind of sense, because they're all represented with these numbers that you see on the side over here, where they're located at on this vehicle or in this world. So if I move this over here and load it up, like if I scooted that all the way over and loaded it in game, the collision would still be right there because the game is being told from the mod that this mod's collision has now moved over there. If that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Let me know down in the comments if I'm doing this a little bit better than now. Um, okay, I'm interested to get into, you got the scenograph here, which kind of breaks it down. You don't want to really mess around with moving stuff in here or deleting things unless you know exactly what you're doing. Because uh, these, each one of these little transform groups or different parts or whatnot 
they very well possibly could be assigned in the XML uh, some type of task. Uh, and it would refer back to this index path here, this number. You'll find this number in the XML uh, uh, referencing telling, hey, that's where the wheel is. So you're going to make a turn right there. And same thing with the indoor camera. Like you really don't want to be messing with the indoor camera. Uh, if it's set in place on the mod, don't move it around at all. Just stay away from it. Uh, I will go through a mod typically in a little different video, but next up I'm going to run into the material editing panel. Kind of give you a little rundown on this here. So we're going to click on the visual of the peat here and kind of walk you through a few different ways that these mods have been being created. So that one just looks fabulous then. Okay. I gotta find one with the texture. So here's one with the texture. And see back back bars. This albedo is the path of the texture. We'll click on that and you'll see that, hey, there's the texture and you can reassign this. I, I mean, I don't know why you would because uh, unless you had your own model and your own UV mapping, which if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you're not at that level yet. So it'll follow that. A veto color only will light up that you can change it when this is turned off. When you click this and remove the texture image then these will turn white and then you can change the color to black, red, green, whatever. It's a mixture of these. So like all zeros is black, all ones is white. I think a one and a zero, a zero is a red and a one and a one and zero is a green. This You can play with it and then you can do 0 0.25, 0 0.6, um, whatever colors you really want to do with your mod. That's how you would change colors of the material. <coughs> Um, next up, your gloss maps are going to only apply if you have a dirt map that you know how to use. Uh, I don't see any dirt maps on this vehicle at all, so I can't really explain that. Dirt mapping, we'll do a different different video later on about that. Uh, smoothness here, that's going to make it more plastic or more metal-like. Um, same thing with the metal, like if you want all chrome, we'll look at some of this chrome here and see how it's made. If you want it all chrome, that one's a straight called gray. Yeah, see, all chrome is no mapping assigned. One, one, one. Actually. We gotta find some chrome here. I thought I had the chrome. Woo. Yep, that's the chrome. Okay, so. I showed this in another video already, but this will be a little refresher. Uh, if, I, if I hit zero on the smoothness, it would take all that chrome out. I can do 0.5, but the best quality you're going to get is one. Okay, and the same thing with the metal. I do that. It just kind of takes it to a different level for us. You can slowly see it's better to work the metal when you're doing your chrome. Uh, a normal map. I don't think there's any normal maps on this, probably. There might be on the wheels. No, just uh, just a texture. Okay, normal maps or what give polygons and stuff more depth. Uh, if you don't know how to make a normal map, there's plenty of tutorials online on how to make normal maps uh, using other programs that I had. I just haven't got into making a video yet with one of those. And then uh, you'll come down here, bump. Don't mess with that emissive map. Um, this is kind of when you get into your lights and whatnot, you're going to be tracking down different light patterns that are in the game that you can use. And then shader source is going to be a mixture of things. It's going to be your like universal code that you can throw in there, whether it's a flag shader, um, like on my Lambo mods flag that I make that you can wave a flag at the back end, or it's a dirt shader that adds dirt as you drive around. Uh, it's just code that the game can read. And you basically can select any kind of shader you want. Um, 
if you don't know about these shaders already, FS17 support has shaders for FS17. So if you're converting your mod, uh, you just double click on that shader and it'll do all the rest for you. Uh, as far as if you already have the old spectral dirt map, it used to say spectral, specular, sorry, specular. I just got in watching spec, spec movie. <laughs> But it's, it'll say specular in Giants, the older versions. Now they change it to gloss map because this also adds wear. Um, now I'll explain a little bit about, there's this fancy, you can't really see it because it's green. We'll zoom in. There's this fancy little orbital here that has your y, has your y axis, your x axis, and your Z axis, your blue is your Z, your red is your X, and your green is your Y axis. You'll notice over here on your right, translate X. So translate is moving left and right, up and down. Um, translate Y, translate Z. So where this wheel is centered, it's centered in the middle of this transform group. And this transform group is moved to this location inside Pete Log Truck. That's how these work here. So it's a map within a map because I can move this over here and it doesn't affect the location of that one still. It just moved all that stuff. Um, I hope that makes sense. I'll explain that. So if I wanted to move it up a little bit, maybe right a little lower, you notice my Y translate moves. And same thing with my Z if I wanted to scoot them back and forth. So now you can start moving your mods and stuff around. Uh, with the new FF19 update, right here where you see it says name, uh, usually those are used in the XML to reference back. So that name, do not change it. If you're opening up a mod for the first time or whatnot, it's gonna refer back to that inside the XML. Um, if I can show you really quick. Whee! Shade right down here at the bottom. Oh, actually, well, Winston did it a little different way that you guys can learn. I know this is about Giants Editor, so I'll make it quick in here. Um, basically, here's a wheel node. Um, it, it's He's not using it, so the old code, He's it's the way of putting this value right here in there. That's where that wheel is, or that's where that drive node is. This This would be the location of the wheel that would be zero, zero, this transform. So this transform will spin. That's what rapport is. And then this one, zero, zero, I, I like. This one will turn, ink that one up. Don't listen to me right now, it's late. This one will be the one it turns, the rapport. And then this one is the drive node. And I'll show you that again right here. This is the turning. This is the drive node, and the drive node is located inside the turning. That way, when it turns, it'll still drive that way, if that makes sense. Um, there we go. That's kind of the basics of doing vehicle with Giants Editor a little bit, a little bit of a rundown on what some things are. And we will go into a little bit more detail in episode number two for this. Giants 102 or something like that. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button. I will talk to you guys later.